Welcome to Tech Collective Channel today, as we bring you the Inside Neo Millions of Dollar Factory. Neo, a pure play in the electric vehicle EV market, could be seen by investors as one of the most serious competitors to Tesla's success in China. But there's a lot more to learn about this business, which is on the verge of revolutionizing the Chinese automobile market. And because the best investors are those who are well informed, let's take a look at a few items that will help us get a fuller picture of the business. Before we continue, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get more luxurious videos delivered right to you. Let's start with its name, means blue sky coming. Why lie? Neo's Chinese name means blue sky coming. In 2014, Lee created Nextcar Incorporated, which he renamed in 2015. Three years later, it changed its name to Neo. The EP9, Neo's first supercar, debuted in 2016. The ES8 was introduced in December 2017 as the company's first mass produced vehicle, with deliveries beginning in June of this year. The ES8 is a seven-seater electric SUV with an all-aluminum body that the company claims is less expensive in China than Tesla's Model X. In the prospectus, NIO said, Currently, we assume no premium BEV is available to Chinese consumers at reasonable pricing, and the ES8 is expected to face minimal competition from premium BEVs initially. According to the prospectus, as of the end of July, NEO had shipped 481 ES-8s and had unfilled reservations for more than 17,000 ES-8s with deposits. NEO intends to release its second car, the ES-6, by the end of 2018, with deliveries beginning in the first half of 2019. According to the filing, the ES-6 is a five-seater, high-performance, compact electric SUV set at a lower price point than the ES-8 to attract a wider customer base. In the filing, NEO issued a fairly standard warning about the ES-6, stating that it will not successfully improve the ES-6. Customer standards may not be met, and future versions like the ES-6 may not be commercially viable. Number 9 goes to hitting the road. NEO became a publicly traded stock on the American market in September 2018, after raising $1 billion in its initial public offering. According to Reuters, management had higher expectations for the IPO, with one source close to the situation claiming that the company had requested a valuation three times higher when it first started the process. The stock opened at $6 closed at $6.60 and traded as high as $6.93 on its first day of trading for a fair gain. Number 8 goes to 1 for the record books. NEO found itself on top of the world not long after its promising IPO. Chen Haiyi of China set a new Guinness World Record on September 24, 2018 when he climbed the Purag Kangri Glacier in Tibet in the NEO ES-8 and reached an altitude of 18,751 feet, setting a new record for the highest altitude reached in an electric vehicle. The feat was intended to demonstrate the EV's prowess in high altitude and extreme cold, according to the company. Number 7 is the bright red light. Financial data is scarce due to the company's short operating history. Nonetheless, one thing is clear, the business has been heavily reliant on debt. According to Morningstar, NEO had a debt-to-equity ratio of 3.78 at the end of quarter 1, 2019, a substantial improvement from the 0.17 ratio it had at the end of 2018. For investors who are bullish on the stock, the company's high debt load may not be a concern as it extends its network of power solutions, including NEO Power Home and Power Express. More on these below and starts shipping the ES-6, the second model in mass production. Number 6 is limited experience in making cars. NEO's prospectus is full of risks, all of which are familiar to anyone who has read anything about Tesla. Our ability to produce and manufacture a car of adequate quality and appeal to consumers on schedule and a large scale is unproven and still evolving. 
it said, of market risks. NEO admits to having no experience with high volume electric vehicle production. We cannot guarantee that we will be able to develop functional, automated, cost-effective manufacturing capability and processes, as well as reliable sources of component supply to meet the quality, price, engineering, design, and production requirements, as well as the production volumes needed to successfully mass market the ES8 and future vehicles, it said. Then there's the issue of the vendors. The ES8 is made up of over 1,700 imported parts from over 160 different suppliers. Many of these are single source manufacturers for these parts and the company expects the ES6 and any other potential vehicle it produces to be identical. According to the prospectus, the supply chain exposes us to several possible sources of distribution loss or component shortages. Also, the corporation is heavily reliant on government incentives and policies that promote electric vehicles. Number five is an unusual and risky corporate structure. NIO is a variable interest entity, or VIE, like many other Chinese companies with international listings. VIEs were developed in the 1990s as a loophole for Chinese companies that were not permitted to have direct foreign ownership. The Chinese company establishes two entities under the VIE structure, one in China that holds the necessary permits and licenses to do business there, and the other offshore, in this case in the Cayman Islands, where foreign investors can buy shares. In contractual agreements, the Chinese entity, which is normally owned by top executives, pays fees and royalties to the offshore company. Alibaba Group Holding Limited is the most well-known VIE with its founder and chairman, Jack Ma, controlling 100% of the Chinese business. The danger with this structure is that foreign investors do not own stock in the firm, and local management or even the Chinese government may decide or force a split with the listed company, leaving U.S. investors high and dry. The corporation warns in its prospectus that it is unclear if any new PRC laws or regulations relating to variable interest organization structures would be implemented, or if adopted, what they will provide. NEO has less reporting and other criteria as an emerging development business. Number four is no revenue until recently. NEO shares more than ambition with Tesla. It has also lost a lot of money and burned through a lot of capital, which is one of the reasons it wants to go public. We have negative cash flows from operations, have only recently started to produce sales and have not been profitable, it warned. NEO started posting revenue this year, with 6.7 million in car sales and 7 million in overall revenue for the first six months of 2018, despite net losses of 502 million. For the entire year of 2017, the corporation announced a net loss of $758.8 million. NEO had spent $549 million in cash to run through June, compared to $691 million for the entire year of 2017. In the first six months of this year, capital expenditures totaled $163 million, compared to $168 million for the entire previous year. The organization expects to spend $1.8 billion on capital expenditures over the next three years. This includes funds for equipment upgrades and installation at a Shanghai factory, as well as research and development and the expansion of the company's sales and service network. It plans to spend about $600 million over the next 12 months, beginning in July 2018. According to the prospectus, NEO's gross borrowings as of June totaled $189.9 million, consisting primarily of bank loans and a loan from its investors. Number three is presenting a powerful proposition. With the electric vehicle market still in its infancy, NEO recognizes that a scarcity of charging stations may deter potential customers from going electric. As a result, it is working to include a wide range of recharging options. Where possible, the company would install charging stations at customers' homes as part of its Power Home solution. Customers of NEO can also recharge at one of the more than 300,000 public charging stations in China as of the end of 2018. It also has 485 fast-charging trucks known as NEO Power Mobile. 
As of the end of 2018, NEO offered battery swapping to users of both the ES6 and ES8 in 22 cities. Number two is a global effort. Even though NEO's vehicles are only seen on Chinese highways, the company employs people from all over the world. The company's North American headquarters, for example, in San Jose, California, employs over 500 people who mainly work in software development. The London office, according to the company, focuses on commercial Formula E, race car management, strategic management, and our supercar growth while the Munich office, which employs nearly 200 staff, focuses on product and brand design. Number one is, is its eye bigger than its stomach? Although NEO currently only offers two models, the company hopes to significantly expand its product line. It stated in its 20F annual filing that it plans to launch a new vehicle model each year for the foreseeable future, as we plan to offer our users more choices to suit their preferences and target different segments within the premium electric vehicle market in China. It also intends to continuously upgrade existing models with facelifts for each model a year. That's it for the Inside Neo Millions of Dollar Factory. If you liked our video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time from your team from Luxury List.